Welcome to the Loire Valley! It is the home of Villandry Castle, which has one of the most famous Renaissance former gardens. We also explored secret troglodytes caves under the Brise Castle that are a thousand years old and really enjoyed the surrounding countryside, which is full of the most beautiful villages of France. Of course, we had to see Azel Rideau, one of the jewels of Touraine, a wonderful moated castle. The royal town of Chinon is home to the most scenic brocante, and we were lucky enough to catch it. The Loire Valley is truly the land of kings, stunning castles, beautiful gardens, wild rivers, and delicious wine. We absolutely enjoyed our stay there. I do hope that you also fall in love with the region when touring it with us. This is actually the second time that we visit the area, so we thought we would go around some lesser known castles. And Breze Castle was very interesting because it's a beautiful example of a 16th century Renaissance castle and it also has a couple of secrets. The indoor visit was pretty quick, but that's not the reason why we decided to see the castle. It's actually built on top of more than three kilometers of galleries underground. So it's described as a castle on top of a castle. We decided to explore the secret troglodytes cave that have actually been used for over a thousand years. The castle was built on top of those caves to protect its occupants during raids or long sieges. It was actually pretty cold there. I think the temperature stays about between 13 and 15 degrees Celsius underground. It was absolutely incredible to see. They had everything, dwellings, stables. There was even a bakery from which you can still see all the smoke traces on the ceiling. They used to store so many things. They also made silk there and were keeping, you know, the worms that were making the silk. It was absolutely remarkable to visit this incredible underground fortress and it's the largest of its kind in Europe. We could also visit the old cellar where they used to store and make wine. And actually the wine of the castle has been known since the Middle Ages, specifically Le Chenin Blanc, so white wine, which is incredible and is still made in the castle vineyards to this day. They are still using some of the underground passageways as storage because again, that temperature stays very constant, which is very good for wine storage. Ooh, that fresh. We decided to do the wine tasting. We could try the wine that's produced on the estate. And we decided to buy a couple of bottles of that very famous white wine to bring home. Driving around the countryside there was very scenic and made really special by all the fields of sunflowers that you could see and visit from the side of the road. If you ever come to France, one thing that I can absolutely recommend is looking up Les Plus Beaux Villages de France, which is a list of the most beautiful villages in France. All the villages on that list are chosen and voted as the most beautiful villages because they hold some historical interest, a castle, some beautiful architecture, a lot of history, and overall literally feel like you're walking back into time. We decided to explore the beautiful village of montreuil belay complete with a castle and beautiful river sidewalks. It was absolutely stunning to be there. Enjoy nature, enjoy the surroundings. It was even complete with romantic ruins of an old abbey, which would have been the perfect picnic grounds. You could also notice a large effort of planting up the areas. There was beautiful Russian sage and a lot of borders that were all decked out for summer and fall like this wonderful Rudbeckia and Jerem combination, which gave me a lot of inspiration for my own garden. As the evening drew to a close, it was time to settle in our Airbnb. We were really lucky to be able to find this accommodation a little bit at the last minute. And so we stayed at this Priory, which has been renovated by the owners. And our room had all the castle vibes. Vibe. Oh my god, look at that little staircase! We stayed there for the entire duration of our stay and I'm really glad we did that because it meant we didn't have to 
be always packing up the suitcases and we could organize all the activities around that central point. And it was even complete with a turret from which you could see the surrounding area. That was incredible. The whole estate was surrounded by a beautiful countryside. Actually, just next door, they were cultivating a currant, that acidic red berry. It was, it was wonderful to just being able to walk there. And therefore, it was also very quiet because it was surrounded by fields. We had, we had the best time there. We then headed to dinner in Saumur and I wanted to catch the fireworks display. Actually, this was on Bastille Day, the 14th of July, the National Day of France. And it's very customary for each town or city to be holding their own fireworks display. So we caught the show in Saumur and it was a lovely evening. To start our second day, we headed east towards Tour and Villandry Castle and Gardens. Of course, we started by visiting the gardens, which were really one of a kind. The gardens are in keeping with the 16th century Renaissance style, but they didn't always look like this. They were actually fairly recently redesigned at the beginning of the 20th century by the family that currently owns the castle, the Carvalhos. The gardens are organized around three levels and this is the ornamental garden. One of the elements that tied all the different gardens together was the sound and the use of water. The kitchen garden was surrounded by walkways covered with grapes. It was absolutely lovely to walk through and I cannot imagine what it must be like to visit this in autumn with the grapes ripening. That's, that's on my to-do list for now. The kitchen garden was organized around nine different gardens with different geometrical design. I think the ornamental kitchen garden was my favorite part of the gardens. The design of the garden beds is absolutely incredible from the shape and also the planting. It's made of nine different patches of about the same size and within those all the designs are different and change in spring and then in the summer. One of my favorite details was to see espalier trees in the step over training that were lining all the kitchen garden plantings. That was absolutely stunning. This is totally potager inspiration right there, like potager gold. As I mentioned, this gave me serious potager inspiration. So I took close-ups of all the planting designs because I thought the play on the colors was really interesting. And also the use as things like kale and cauliflower, for example, for the winter months that would still provide you with edibles, but also a lot of color and interest in your gardens. We then headed toward the herb garden, which again was on a level so you could have that wonderful view on all the ornamental garden. I think we ended up spending more than three hours in the garden exploring everything. There's actually a lot more footage and a lot more areas and garden rooms that I haven't showed you because the video was going to get too long. So let me know if you'd like a separate video on Villandry Castle and Gardens. I am obsessed and I think there's a lot more inspiration we could draw from. The interiors were as splendid as the gardens. The attention to detail. You could truly experience the luxury of what it must have been like to live there at the time. And something that was very different there is that you could actually walk freely into the rooms and not just stand out and look in or just have to stay in a narrow walkway like in a lot of the visits of castles that you typically do you could go everywhere and get really close to details and that to me that really enhanced the visit another detail that really made me feel welcome and made every room even more gorgeous was the presence of fresh flowers in every single room the kitchen even the walkways 
bedrooms, everywhere you add wonderful fresh flowers or potted flowers or flower arrangements and to me that really enhance the experience. Every single detail was incredible, from the flooring to the quality of the tapestry, the curtains, every single fitting and fixture was absolutely exquisite. Part of the castle was also arranged as a museum, and one of the most impressive pieces was a ceiling from the 15th century from Spain. I cannot recommend you more visiting Villandry. To me, it was one of the most beautiful castles I've ever visited. We had a quick lunch break by the riverside and headed to our next destination, the lovely town of Aze Lorido. This was the perfect place to grab a coffee and rest a little bit before we headed to the castle. In the summer actually, the castle is open late in the evening and they run special animations where they add sounds and smells to the castle visits and this only started at about 7. So we had a little bit of time to tour the grounds and enjoy the gardens before we headed inside. I noticed in the region and the area that hydrangeas were absolutely stunning. Everywhere we went there would be hydrangeas that were absolutely lush and thriving. And Le Chateau de Azelorido was no exception to that hydrangeas were in their full glory and that got me really inspired to add some in our garden at home actually. The castle was a little bit smaller but very special because it is still in a wet mode which is not very common these days and again is a beautiful example of a 16th century renaissance castle. The water goes really under the castle and there's a little viewpoint indoors when we visit where you can actually see that. It's, it's incredible. You really feel like you're floating on top of the water. Look at that! And it was finally time to head inside. I didn't grab too much footage because this was an example where, well, one, the castle was kept in the dark to protect some of the art and the tapestries in there, but also there was not a lot of furnishings in it. There were still a lot of beautiful architectural details to be enjoyed, like the stairways and a lot of beautiful stonework. Something that felt like going behind the scenes was being able to access the attic and see how the roof was constructed and how they were getting to that wonderful and typical roof line. It's actually incredible to think of the amount of wood that was used there. And some of the wood from that roof was taken from a forest in Chinon nearby. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I love thrift shopping. And so we decided to head to Chinon to the monthly professional brocante there and see if we could find a few treasures for our home. The brocante was held just by the river, the Vienne, so it was actually the most wonderful location just under the trees. It was so peaceful and so wonderful to be able to browse there. 
I'm always looking for dinnerware when I go there. I really love vintage plays. I'm also always looking for new pieces of art. Lately, I've also been looking for lighting. Actually, in our rental, every single room only has one light bulb, like no light fixtures or anything. So we need to find our own. So I'm definitely looking for that. I've also been wanting two bedside tables. I'm wondering if we could find some antique ones. I think that would be absolutely beautiful to contrast with a more modern bed that we have. I am obsessed, look at that. And yes, the entire brocante was held next to the river. So this is almost the view that we had the entire time. It was the loveliest experience. I think it's one of the loveliest brocantes I've ever been to. Instead of visiting the Chateau de Chinon, we opted to go to another nearby castle in the town of Ussé Rigny, which was labeled as Sleeping Beauty's Castle. We also opted for this castle because it had gardens which were designed by Le Nôtre, a garden architect who also designed some gardens in Versailles. So we thought that might be really interesting. In the gardens you could spot the typical castle plants like roses and lavender. In the more formal beds, the color scheme was pretty simple. It was red and white with the beautiful begonias that were giving that very symmetrical pattern. The formal elements of a French gardens were really present with the extensive use of edging and also container grown plants that really reminded me of Versailles actually, which is not surprising given that the same designer designed those gardens. The view of the gardens was really exquisite from above again. I think those gardens were really designed to be viewed from the top and that shows. Look at those gorgeous shapes. Similar to Villandry, part of the castle is still habited by the owners, is the Blackest family, so we could only tour a couple of rooms inside. The indoor visit was arranged around two themes. One was the best of period costumes, wonderful dresses from the 17th century all the way to the 1930s, and also the Sleeping Beauty tour. So we added up of the tower to the highest room in the tallest tower and explored the Sleeping Beauty trail.
After the castle of Ise, we decided to squeeze in one more visit to the Abbey of Fontevraud. It's actually one of the biggest abbeys in Europe and we thought we couldn't miss it because it is currently the resting place of Eleonore d'Aquitaine and Richard Lionheart, Richard Cœur de Lyon. The next day, we headed to another plus beau village de France called Montsoreau and had the most wonderful walk around the village where we could have wonderful views on the castle and the surrounding countryside. It was absolutely peaceful. From everywhere we looked, we had wonderful views on the castle. We decided to visit the castle even though it wasn't laid out as a traditional medieval castle or renaissance castle but as a modern art museum and even further than that as a conceptual art museum so i would definitely say that if you're not into modern art you're not missing much and you can actually enjoy the castle from from the village but we decided it would be worth it just for the view because you can actually climb all the way on top to the castle roof and have a wonderful view of the riverside, of the roof line, of the village nearby. So we thought just to enjoy the view, it would be worth it. And this is the Loire River. The village itself of course earned its title of a most beautiful village and was full of lovely flowers and beautiful streets with lots of gorgeous old buildings and a lot of character. On our way out of the village, we actually drove past un vide de maison, which is like a yard sale, but specifically to empty a house before a move. And we thought we might be able to find a few treasures there. And we did. Stay tuned for a haul at the end of the video. If you've ever been to France, you might know that Emmaüs is a great place to find some second-hand treasures. So we decided to head to the one in Saumur before we got home in the hope that we would find some beautiful treasures and we did. It's actually really well stocked and had an entire section of older pieces that were curated and we really found a lot. So we are back. It was an absolutely lovely four day weekend. We saw so many beautiful places. And of course it was time for a little bit of brocante, flea markets and thrift shopping. So let me show you what I got. 
I found a beautiful set of the Sargaming plates. Absolutely lovely. I thought these would be really great for late summer, early fall with the red. I think I have 10 of those. It's called semi clothes in French. If I find the word in English, I'll pop it. They're not quite soup plates, but they're not flat either. And I really like that actually it keeps the food well contained. So that's really great. Then I found that little long plate. I don't really mind because I mix and match a lot. This is Saint Amand et Amage, really beautiful. Model Valier with some seashells. It's absolutely lovely. I also found this lovely bench. I thought it would be perfect to stage some flowers. I really love this detail. I don't even know what to call it. This is like a wood carving, that twisted wood effect. And the color is absolutely lovely. So we had to have it. If you've already been treasure hunting in France, you already know that Emmaus is a really good place to find items. And so the next items are from there. I also found this beautiful painting. I really love anything with fruits in it. I really like the colors of these two. I think it would be really pretty for fall. I only pulled out two, but I found this set of six glasses. They're crystal. I thought the shape was so interesting. It looks like a tulip, but it looks like a tulip flower almost. That gives us more drinking glasses. I've been looking for these for a while. Then I found this lamp. It's in need of a shade, but I think it's in alabaster. It's beautiful. It's pretty heavy. It has a hexagonal base and a lot of beautiful ribbing detail. Yeah, I think with the right shade, this might be really lovely as a bedside table maybe, or in an office, or even in the living room for accent lighting. Super sweet. And we got this book. We're starting a collection. It's a beautiful book of old maps in the 17th century. It's, it's a great collection piece. We also found a chandelier. We were in Montsoreau and we drove past a vide maison, which is equivalent to an estate sale or maybe more like a yard sale, but in the house, if that makes sense. We stopped there and we found this beautiful chandelier. I think for the living room, it's going to be absolutely lovely. I do have to fix a couple of things on it, but it's crystal, it's old, and I think it's going to be absolutely stunning. So I can't wait to get that installed. That, that's it, that's not, you know, not too much damage and we couldn't bring back too much even though we went with the car. I really hope that you enjoyed this vlog and coming along for a little bit of our summer holidays. Let me know if you like these type of videos, if you'd like more vlogs like this of life in general and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.